Happy Tuesday, October uh, 6th here, the Owl or Nothing podcast. I'm Christopher Lynn, Assistant AD for Equipment, joined by... Uh, Welcome, Chris. I'm Jay, Jay Turiano, Jay Assistant Turiano. Facilities Coordinator. How are you? I'm great. I'm fantastic today. Happy to be here today. Today's been a... It's a good day. You know why? Why? You Donis Haslam did it again. What did he do? Led the Heat to victory in the uh, finals. That's all that guy does. He just wins. He's a winner. How many ranks with the Heat? Uh, he's got all of them. He's got three. And, they, and he's been to every finals that they've had. Only only been on the Heat, too, I believe, right? It's the only team he's been with. 17 seasons, I think it is. That's amazing. He's He didn't actually do anything to help them last night, I don't think. Did he get in the game? No. DNP? He got a no, DNP? Yeah. That's but I, right. he likes that role. I think he's... He's a little older. I think getting him down the court may not really be his thing. I think he's he's like the player coach right now for them. He's always in the huddle while, you know, Spo and the the rest of the staff are trying to figure out what to do. So, you need guys like that. He is. He's a the veteran leader of the group. So how was the game? Did they dominate the whole game? I did not watch. Uh, to be, I'll be very honest. Yesterday was my wife's birthday, so I have a birthday to Happy Kate. Happy birthday, Kate. Um, so I didn't get to watch the entire thing. I think I only caught the end of the game, and all I know is Jimmy Butler went went nutty yesterday. Triple double? Nutty. Yeah, I think he had a 40 point triple double, right? Well, we're on the topic of basketball. I think we should introduce our guest. It's only fitting. I'm very honored to introduce this person, somebody I've known for a long time, a very long time. Okay, I'm taking a deep breath because there's a lot of things I'm going to say. I mean, and I'm not even going to touch upon all of them. You can chime in afterwards if you want to. She's all the accolades. Right now, but she's a, an NCAA national champion back in 2007. She's a Southern Hall of Famer and any 10 Hall of Famer. Her team is in the Southern Hall of Fame. Team is in any 10 Hall of Fame. She's a two-time All-American. She's the all-time leading scorer at Southern Connecticut State University. Yeah. And it's our head women's basketball coach. I love saying that. Head women's basketball coach, <laughs> Kate Lynch. Kate, how are you? I'm Welcome. How are you? Thank I'm, you guys for having me. I'm great. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> of course. This is awesome. I, I'm Seriously, I love saying our head women's basketball coach. That's fantastic. You don't understand what pride that brings me. Because she was the greatest women's basketball player I've ever seen. And I got to go. I was fortunate enough to go to the national championship and tag along for all the games. It was uh, quite an experience. It was awesome. Yeah, I'm jealous. I, I just missed you. Oh, I came in in 09, so I never got to That's see right. you play. That's right, yep. Yeah. I missed you. A year, yeah. It was this awesome. Year. Yeah, how would you describe your game? Like, for someone who hasn't ever seen you play a game, how would you describe it? Obviously, you can score the score the ball. I I would say I would describe myself as deceptively quick okay. because I'm actually very slow. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I think I was so slow that I was able to like, get by the defenders and actually score. Um, you know, I, I my game progressed over the you know course of, of four years due to Coach Frager and obviously our coaching staff pushing us a little bit. But I was a little bit of an undersized post player, so... I used that to my advantage as best I could. So I stepped out to the three when I could, and when they guarded me there, I tried to go by them. So I just tried to, I guess, outsmart people as best I could, and it turned out in my favor, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so you were a four or five or more of a four, just three? Just strictly a four, yeah. I was okay. brought in to be a guard, but I was, again, really too slow to guard anybody <laughs> in the perimeter. That's honest truth. <laughs> you could ask anybody. Um, so they slipped me into the four position, and I just felt comfortable there. So, awesome. Yeah. How about on the defensive side of the ball? On, in the post, I was good. I, okay. I, I was good in the post. Um, if you put me on the ball, like as a three on the perimeter, that wasn't wasn't so pretty. <laughs> but if you put me on the block, I definitely uh, I tried to out muscle people and out tough them and and out, and out quick them and at that point. So. Awesome. She was awesome. She was awesome to watch play basketball. It was great. Yeah. And she she was fortunate enough to play for who I think is one of the greatest basketball coaches I, I've ever seen. I mean, this guy was Joe Frager was awesome, absolutely awesome. Everything about him, his demeanor was awesome. He was just. A, like when he yelled, you knew something was wrong because he didn't yell. I mean, not that I saw. I mean, for everything I was around, but so if he yelled, people, I feel like people listened to him when he yelled. He is one of the most. He is one of the most active, winningest coaches currently coaching right now. Okay, so that, that's a real stat. So he's over six hundred wins, I think. Um, he surpassed that last year. Um, but no, he's like the best of the best. Um, he's smart. Uh, he he knows the game. He outsmarted other coaches. Um, he prepared us beyond belief. Like we knew what teams had for breakfast. <laughs> we knew <laughs> what they had in their water bottles. You know, like that. That was his thing. So we were big on preparation um, of other teams, and there was not a game where we didn't have the play call um, of the other team and, and the actions that they were doing. We were so well prepared. So. 
um, it was awesome having them as, as our, our leaders because they gave us absolutely every opportunity to win, you know, and, and they did. And fortunately, it came, kind of came all together my junior year and it happened. But um, they're the hardest working staff, and, and we were just fortunate enough to to be able to be a part of it, you know, fortunate enough that they recruited me, and, and, and here I am. You know, it's, it certainly has changed my life for, for the better. Mendes athlete. They say he was, supposedly he was a – Unbelievable baseball player, that was tremendous a, he, athlete. He, he was really, a, I did not know a, that. Yeah. I'm a Division One baseball player, D3 yeah. basketball player. <laughs> to, to Coach Lynch's point, when that that coaching staff, they'd come in in the morning at like seven o'clock, they'd go in the office, which is Coach Le- our uh, Matt Lakowski's office now, and they'd close the door and they would work until practice. Practice would end. They'd go back in the office and work till eight o'clock at night. Like they never stopped working. And, they and knew, it's they knew. To, they right. knew everything. They knew absolutely everything about every opponent, and they were always ahead of the game too. Um, so you always trusted everything in practice. You know what yeah. they had to say, and it was funny because when you go out to the to the elite eight, um, you've never seen any of these teams play before, right? So um, after we played our first game, we won. Now they have to live scout, right? Um, and and that would probably cause a little bit of angst for some other coaches and some other teams. But for us, we we're like, we have Coach Rager. Yeah, you know, so we knew we were going to be better prepared than anybody else. So um, having him by your side <laughs> is definitely a positive. So um, that was really cool to watch because, again, we had like a day to prepare for our semifinal game, and we knew everything. There was not one thing that 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 team did that UC San Diego did that we didn't we weren't prepared for. So, so I've noticed a ton of similarities between you and him. I feel like you've picked up a lot from him. That's safe to say. Give mentor, us a little yeah. give us a little background. Your like, when did you decide you wanted to be a coach and Go through your time at uh, CCRI and, and Malo- I mean, you've been to a lot of different places. Go through some of your time there and ex- tell us how you, what made you want to become a coach and how you really got into it and how you ended up here today. Yeah, so it's, it's funny. So I graduated from Southern in 08 with a degree in exercise science, human performance. Um, so when your career ends, as most student athletes feel, you, you kind of feel a little bit lost. Like, what am I going to do without basketball? What am I going to do, you know? Um, fortunately enough, you know, I went home this summer and I was just kind of working basketball camps and I got a phone call from Coach Frager at Fairfield, and he said, hey, I have a Dobo spot that's open, you know, would you want to come? And I was like, absolutely. You know, that was something I always thought about was being able to coach with Coach Frager. He's my mentor. He's somebody that I look up to. He's somebody that I still speak to all the time and pick his brain all the time about things. Um, so I was there at Fairfield for a year. Um, and in that position as a Dobo, you can't, you know, be on the court and actually, you know, get kind of into the down and dirty stuff. Of tell actually tell our listeners what DOBO stands for. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. We know, but they, yeah. they might I'm not sorry. know. The, the director of basketball operations. Okay. So it's all the behind the scenes right. things like, um, you know, booking hotels and the food and the practice plans and things like that. So um, all things that you absolutely need to know as a head coach for sure. Um, so I spent a year there at Fairfield, really enjoyed my time. Um, then from there, I became the recruiting coordinator for a year at WPI in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, so Worcester Polytech. Um, I loved my experience there. I loved the head coach that I, that I worked for. Um, we're still friends today. And I was actually pretty set on staying there for another year. Really, really was enjoying it. I was closer to home. I was about an hour away from my parents. Um, and then the head coaching job at the Community College of Rhode Island, CCRI, opened up. And people were telling me, hey, you should th- toss your hat in the ring. I was kind of blocking at it a little bit. <clears throat> insert coach Frager again um he picked up the phone and said you need to apply for this job um it, it, if you want to be a head coach at, at some point you you need to be a head coach at, I think I was 24 at the time or 23 24 um so with his advice and his guidance because that's still what I use him for all the time um you know I put my hat in the ring and and I was at CCRI for three years as a head coach now it's funny when you talk about you know how did you get into coaching Mm-hmm. Almost accidentally, I guess you could say, you know, but once I had that first year at, at Fairfield with Coach Frager, I kind of got the coaching bug for sure. And I realized this is my calling. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm passionate about. So from there, I just realized that this, I want to move up the ladder. And, and, and the end goal, honestly, was always to, to be back at Southern Connecticut. You know, this is where I bleed blue. You know, it's my heart and soul. I've always wanted to be back here. So um, I was kind of making those moves um, to put myself in a position where I'd be at least considered at some point in my, my career to, to come to become the head coach here. Um, so I was at CCRI for three years as a head coach. Um, really fortunate. We did pretty well. Um, we won the region championship three times, and we had a couple first-team All-Americans in our last year. We made it to the Elite Eight of the uh, national tournament. So at that point, I really felt like, okay, like I'm ready for my next challenge, you know, is kind of how I looked at it. Um, so I took the head coaching position at Division Two Malloy College on Long Island. Um, so 
I was at, we were out there for two years. I was out there for two years. Um, you know, I was also working in the student affairs office at Malloy College as well. I really enjoyed my time there. Um, I loved the area. Uh, my future in-laws were actually right down the street from us as well, so it was kind of a family affair as well. Um, two years in, head coaching job at Southern opened up, and um, I was hoping and, you know, saying some prayers that, you know, the, the ladder that I kind of climbed along the way the last, you know, seven, eight years would, would put me in this position. And um toss my hat in the ring, and I'm just really fortunate to, to be here and to love to be here. And this is, you know, this is my dream. This is what I've always wanted to do, you know. So my hope here is always obviously to, to make sure that my student athletes have a great experience, that they graduate, um, you know, but also to do the best that I can. You know, our staff can do the best that we can to uh, give them the same experience that we had as student athletes here, you know, on the court, you know, in the classroom, in the community. Um, it's really shaped who I am today, and I'm just forever thankful for, you know, my four years here and the people that influenced me here. So. That's awesome. Do you mind if I uh, m- turn it a little bit to something kind of personal? Sure. So at CCRI, something else happened for you. What happened to you at CCRI? <laughs> so, what else happened? Which I, led me into my in-laws kind I, of a I, little Exactly. Quick, yeah. I, feel like if I, I feel like David would be upset if I didn't mention this. He would be this. very upset. Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> when I was a head coach at CCRI, um, we had a regional rival, um, which, which was Dean College. So Dean was our regional rival in every sport that we played. Um, and, you know, I really, at that point, I really didn't have a great relationship with the head coach of Dean. I really <laughs> wasn't a big fan of his. Um, turns out um, we actually ran into each other at a tournament that um, I was playing in and he was scouting in. And uh, I'm sitting there with my team and I'm writing things down. And he was actually there with his father. He came over and, and you know, I said, hi, I'm, I'm David <laughs> Jelani. I know I know who he was. <laughs> Meanwhile, I played him twice already. Um, you know, I had coach at Dean College, blah, blah, blah. So um, I guess from there, the rest is history. But um, he did did uh, harass me a little bit until I finally said yes because I wasn't really uh, – you know, <laughs> I wanted to win before I was in love, right. I guess, and then it kind of happened <laughs> at the same time. So, um, yeah, so at CCRI my last year – no, two two years in – um, we started dating, and then our last year that I was there, we were dating. Right. Um, so we played each other twice during the year, and one of them was on Valentine's Day at Dean. <laughs> 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 Who won? <laughs> Who won the game? Uh, I'm 8-0, and oh, so. <laughs> Who's wow. counting? Who's wow. Counting? <laughs> David would always say, though, if you can't beat him, Jordan. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's awesome. And, and seriously, I don't know. Have you met David? I have he's one of the most stand-up guy. He's awesome. I absolutely love yeah, him. A really great guy. He's, he's awesome. Seriously. And he's currently at Fairfield U, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, he's the recruiting coordinator at Fairfield University under Coach Joe Frager. Yeah, so look at that. Full the, circle uh, to affair. Joe Frager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned you worked in student affairs at Moy. What did you do uh, with that with that role? We were a small, I guess, student affairs like office, particularly. But you know, we were in the same office as the the VP of. Of student affairs, obviously Bob Houlihan. Um, he's well known and well respected in, in the region. Um, but uh, I was actually head of the rec- recreation department, essentially, and doing um, awesome. any off-campus activities for our residents. Because when we were at Malloy, we had a, only two dorms at the time. They've been building ever since. A great, great school. But um, so we would plan um, activities for students, you know, off-campus um, activities to do around the around the area. So we would do that. We would do. Um, you know, recreation and things like that as well. So uh, in addition to helping with graduation and convocation and all those different things. So we wore a lot of different hats when we were over there, but um, it, was, it was a fun experience to be on, you know, both sides at the same time. Yeah, awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah. So you've been to a bunch of different schools or a couple different schools. Yeah. Do you find it, being that this is your alma mater, that it's easier to recruit kids um, because you're just so passionate about it here and that, and I'm not even talking about from a financial standpoint. I'm just saying, is it easier for you to sell the school to a student athlete? Because, like you said, this is your your home. This is what you loved. And same thing is it since you played here, is it? Do you think you're having success getting alums to come back that may have uh, gone away? I guess would be the right yeah. word to say. Um, for me personally, I mean, I I love talking about Southern, and it's always been something that I love. So. Um, it is easy, and I guess recruiting is never easy. Right, um, right, right. But it's certainly easy for me to talk about my experience as a student athlete. And I think when you're talking to potential student athletes, that means a lot. Um, when you say, I want to be here forever, you know, I'm not, right. I hope to be not going anywhere. Right. I think that gives them some, some level of comfort as well. And I think parents also appreciate that too. You know, I, I, have, I have my degree from here. 
you know, people that I went to school with are now back and working. You know, for example, Chris Lynn. Now, you know, we were very good friends, and now he's, again, he loved it as much as, as I did, so now he's back working. So um, I think that speaks volumes about the types of experiences that people here at Southern, you know, have had. Um, they keep coming back. You know, I'm not from here originally. I'm from Rhode Island. So, you know, you have an out-of-state, you know, student athlete who came here and you know loved it so much sucked you in and here i am now you know i'm married with two kids later you know <laughs> living right down the road right. so um there's definitely something to be said for that um when, in terms of our alums i think so I, I definitely think so i think especially our our 07 national championship team i think you know they feel excited to come back there's a level of comfort there you know knowing that you know they can come back they can be here and and they can be home and you know, we've done we've done our best to 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 reach out to other alums as well. And, you know, we send out a newsletter every month and we keep in contact with them. Obviously, now we can't do some of our fundraising events, but we'll do them virtually or find ways to do that. But I have found it much easier um, in that sense, because there is a sense of camaraderie already having been an alum or having played with a certain you know group of people as mm -hmm. well. So it's easier to reach out to to other alums before us and after us, too. So I want to know about. The national championship team. I want to like. I don't. I don't think. I don't think enough people realize like what what it takes to get to a national championship game, to win a national championship game. Um, I mean, talk about what 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 it takes like to get there as a team, and what was like the attitude on that? Did you guys realize like how good you were? So, <laughs> this is the, one of the beauty, beautiful things about Coach Frager. He never let you know how good you were. Um, he was one of those guys, one of those coaches that would just you know, push you to feel like, oh, I can do a little bit better than what I'm doing. You know, you could have had a triple-double. You can get another rebound. Like, you, can get another <laughs> assist, you know, but, but that's how we coached, and, and, and that worked. That worked for us. It's still working, obviously. Um, it's it's tough to get there. It's really tough. I think we knew. So I think the backstory is important to this, too, because uh, the year before, which was my sophomore year, uh, this this will forever. This is something we all talked about. Um, we were in the Sweet 16 we hosted the regional. Um, we always hosted the regional. That was an expectation, you know, and, and we tell it to our team as well. Like, that's an expectation that Southern is in that conversation about hosting the East, NCAA East Regional. Um, so we were here playing uh, AIC. And, and that was a big rivalry. That big was the rivalry biggest. at the time. Yeah, yeah AIC was excellent. Um, and, and it was a big rivalry. They were right up the street, you know, packed house uh, right in front of our fans, friend, family, friends, everybody. Um, <clears throat> we lost. <laughs> on our, on our, you know, I won't go through the whole game, but uh, we lost on our home floor um, for a chance to go to uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas for the NCAA Elite Eight. Um, and we sat there and we watched AIC walk up the ladder and uh, cut down our nets. And <clears throat> we got up after that. You know, we did what we had to do and, and went back into the locker room and said, never again. We're going to Elite Eight next year. So we're we're going to win a national championship. So that was um, – and, and it was packed, too. It was, it was, it was a great atmosphere. Um, so that was something that, you know, we just took with us, you know, from postseason through the summer, preseason, every single game. That was That's what we thought about. Um, but we never got ahead of ourselves. So our coaching staff never allowed us to get ahead of ourselves. Um, we knew and we still know that we play in one of the best Division II conferences in the country. Um, so day in and day out, it's it's a battle. You're playing against the best of the best. Um and, you know, there was a point where we were 20 and 0 going to, you know, I, I think it was up at St. Rose we were going to 20 and 0. Um, we lost to St. Rose. Um, they wanted to do a, a, a whiteout game, I think it was. They wanted us to make, or they wanted to do a blackout game. So they wanted to wear their black uniforms and we had to wear a white uniform. So it was a, it was a, you know, kind of a disaster waiting to happen in that sense, yeah. you know? Like I can't it, stand that, by you know, the way. Yeah, so that was kind of tough. You Coach Reagan didn't like that either. Which it, we didn't like it either, so we tried to make it, you know. But yeah. it was a tough atmosphere to play, and the ball just didn't roll the way it was supposed to roll for us, you know. So, um, obviously, we were disappointing in ourselves. No one has to tell us that. <clears throat> and after that, I don't know if we won one, um, but but within the next week, we lost another one at pace, Um and that was a tough one to swallow. At that point, I kind of was like, this can't happen anymore because the race was so tight to host the NCAA East Regional, we couldn't lose anymore. Um, so the team had a tough conversation in the locker room. Um, I might have spearheaded it a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> in all honesty. Um, he said, we said, you know what? 
we're going to go win a national championship. That's what that's what this team is going to do. So you're either on the boat or you're in the water. So you better get on the boat now because we're not losing again. Um, that was really the crux of it. And I don't know if Coach Rager actually heard us because he, <laughs> he just opened the door after and was just like, all right, bring it in, <laughs> which he never <laughs> does. So I was like, maybe you heard that. Uh, and from then on, we just kind of ran the table. Um, but we knew that we could be good. I don't think we ever got ahead of ourselves in that sense. Um, but I think we played Bentley here for the Sweet 16, make it to the Elite Eight. We beat those guys. Um, again, it was such a great atmosphere. The place was packed, you know, students, professors, you know, faculty members. And um, then we went out to Kearney, Nebraska. That was our that was our next uh, stop. And uh, we took our chartered flight out there. Um, but it was a business trip for us. <laughs> Most teams probably go out excited. Um, the expectation was that, we're going to go win a national championship. No one had to tell us that. This is just another stop, you know. So everything that we did was was fairly serious, you know. We had fun team dinners and things like that, um, you know. But we played Drury that first day. It was an awkward day. It was like we played up at noon. Yeah, it was a weird time. Really weird time, you know, central time zone. So you're kind of thrown off a little bit. I think we ended up beating them by 20. Um, and then we played UC San Diego, which was really difficult. That was a tough game. Again, we ended up winning, I think, at the end of it by 16. And then we played Florida Gulf Coast in the uh, the national championship game, won by fifteen, I think. And that was the game too, like where because I, I like I said I was there. And it was that was the team where that was like the collision course almost from the beginning of the well, season. They really, thirty four and all, like right. they, they were number one in the country. Right. They hadn't lost anybody, but like we said, well, you we haven't played us yet. Right, you know, we were that team. We're like, well, you haven't played us right. yet. You know, what do you got? <laughs> and, and she's right. And again, you know, we had. Joe Frager, like we knew we were as prepared as humanly possible. So we had one day to prepare and we had like a, a you know, a scouting report that was this thick, you know, <laughs> and we had to know it inside and out and we did. So, you know, he created that culture and fostered that culture, but we bought into it, you know, like we knew we trusted him and he trusted us. And um, that was just, it was, it was the best. And looking back on it now, you're like, we, we really, it, no, no games were really close. Um, because we think that we were pretty well prepared during the year playing in the any 10, you know, so we felt confident in, in our ability with that. Um, it was just one of the, the best feelings in the world when you're, you know, at the free throw line, knocking down a couple of free throws and kind of looking up and, and realizing like, we're going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I think it might have been Shamika who was on the free throw line. I was on there a couple of times. They tried to follow us to slow down the game a little bit. And I was at half court, I think with Michelle Martinick, I think. And, um, I just looked. I just looked up, and I just caught my parents' eye. Like you just kind of look up. It's one of those moments, and I was just like, kind of shrugged my shoulders, right. like, <laughs> "Heck, we're gonna do this," you know. Uh, and um, really, truly, one of the best things that you know, best feelings I've ever had. You know, just doing that with your best friends. You know, going from such disappointment the year before, which to most teams wouldn't be disappointment, but for us, it was disappointing losing in the Sweet 16 last year, and then you know, working a full year, we committed ourselves to that goal and, and didn't let each other slip. You know, we held each other accountable and uh, it was really, it's, it's awesome. So it's, it's truly an honor to be back here at Southern on the sidelines, you know, representing that team, representing Coach Rager and, and the big shoes to fill, <laughs> a lot right. of big shoes to fill. But, you know, like I said, our goal as a coaching staff is to try to give that same experience, you know, to our student athletes, hopefully more, you know, so we're working our way towards that. You want, here's a quick story about that that year or that that day actually the day we won which i thought this is one of my favorite things ever and besides the win which was awesome like i was there first of all i was there to do laundry and let's keep that in perspective and i was more nervous like i can't imagine how they felt like the game would start and me and the athletic trainer charlie davis like he'd have to look over like are you okay i'm like no like I'm, i was so nervous the entire time but <laughs> so after the game ends we we um on uh, the president university time decided that she was going to take the entire team out to dinner. The alley rose, the only place. It <laughs> yeah. And but I, I'll <laughs> tell, tell you one of, the, one of the coolest parts about it was when we walked in, cause it was mostly our families, everybody's families yeah. that were there, but there were random, but when we walked in, like everybody was standing up and clapping Clapping. and cheering. We like, it was one of the coolest atmospheres. It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome to be part of. Definitely. And and it's funny because you think Kearney, Nebraska, no one's really ever been there, but it holds a very special place in my heart for sure. Uh, But he's right. Like even before we even won, you know, we were the kind of biggest thing in town, uh, the the eight teams that were there and and we would go to elementary schools and, and, um, you know, do some community service work and those kids would come to our games, which was awesome. Um, So we have a bunch of pictures of kids with like Southern, you know, gear on from Kearney, Nebraska. Um, But no matter where we went, 
people were like, good luck, ladies. Yep. Or they're standing up, clapping before we even played our first game. So the atmosphere that was created there was, was really awesome. Um, but going back to the story I <laughs> had about being nervous. So before, when we were warming up um, before that national championship game, I had a few weird things that I had to eat before a game. One of them was pancakes. <laughs> That's weird. Nice. And then I had like a little um, yogurt bar that I always ate, you know, right before. We were stretching, and Coach Frager was in there writing on the board, and I was like, oh, my gosh. As I turned to Michelle Marnick, I said, I forgot my bar. And she's like, well, you got to go eat it. got to go get it. I'm like, well, he's in the locker room. She's like, go get it. <laughs> you know, so we were very, you know, superstitious. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I walk in there, and um, I open the door, and he's kind of writing on the board. And I, hey, Coach. He's like, hey, Kate. And, you know, kind of looked a little, you know, very solemn. Like, yep. Coach, you know, Coach is very serious. And I said, I took, I took the bar and said, we got you, Coach. Don't worry about it. Relax. We got you. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but, you know, we're like, we got you. We got you. Don't be nervous. We got you. We'll do everything you ask us to do, and hopefully the, the ball goes in, and it did. So Yeah, I mean, for me, that feeling when you get the championship shirt and hat has got to be the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Where is yours? Yeah, like, do you I still, still have, have that? My, I still have you mine. Still have yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I've never worn it. I've never – I've awesome. only left That's it in the awesome. drawer. I refuse to wear it. <laughs> you know what was, you know was cool, too? So after um, – you know, we got back. The bookstore actually put out a form of that T-shirt. Yep. I think it was navy blue and national champions. And um, the weirdest thing would be the weirdest slash coolest thing would be that you'd be walking a class and you'd see <laughs> one of your fellow <laughs> students that you didn't even know, right. you know, wearing a national championship shirt, and you're just like, "Hey, thanks!" And they're like, "Well, thank you." You know, yeah. it's just a, a really cool moment. You know, when when people come together. You know, so we were happy that we were able to do that for the community at the time. You know, so it was really cool. It's awesome. How's this team look this year? Our team? Yeah. I'm excited. I've been, well, here, here's the thing. I've been here for two years. Yes. And when I got here, everyone kept saying, you got to see Kiana. Kiana's incredible. Kiana's great. And she lived up to the billing. No question about that. Loser last year to injury. But that first year where I was here, two years ago, you met, you lost Jess Fresley to the injury. So you, you had your top two never, who haven't played together for two years. Yeah. And now you have this like collision course. They're both back. <laughs> The expectations are definitely high. Um, and not to mention the best friends and roommates, too, Kiana and Jess. So, yeah, it's felt like we haven't had the, you know, perfect storm yet. We haven't had everybody full force. Um, so, and it, it, everybody's important. Everyone has a role in the team, too. So so missing either one of them was huge, you know, and, and that was a leadership portion that we we're missing as well. So we are excited, um, definitely with our additions. You know, I... I the expectations are high. You know, their their goal is pretty specific. Um, you know, if we talked about our goal. We're just starting a little bit later. That's all. The goal right. remains the same. The same. We're just not. We're not starting when we thought we were going to start. You know, so they've been very focused. I think we're entering week four of workouts. Um, but just some of the additions, um, you know, that have come along to us. I mean, really, they're they're great young people. Um, they're team players. They work hard. This group works really hard. They do whatever you ask them to do, no question. Um, they want to learn. They love to learn, you know. So if you're teaching them or they make a mistake and you're, you're reteaching it, they want to absorb it. They want to get better. They want to be perfect at it. Um, and that's something that, you know, every coach wants in a group, mm -hmm. a, a team that is willing to, to, to want to be pushed to be great. And I really think we have a great mix of what we need to, to make a really good Good run out of it you know we just got to stay motivated and and uh you know stay the course we said january 9th is a long way away but we got to put in the work now in order to to reap any kind of benefits at the end so i miss sports yeah, i can't wait <laughs> i like can't it wait it's course. been so long yeah yes. <laughs> yep. can't wait to stay the course so how would you describe your coaching style to a recruit i always say i'm not a yeller and I'm, I'm not a yeller. Mm -hmm. um, I set clear expectations of our student athletes so that you always know where you stand. Um, um, they always know where they fall to. Um, I'm very open and honest because I think that's what you need in your student athlete experience. I'm not going to tell you one thing and then expect another thing. You know, if it, mm -hmm. if I need to tell you that you need to work a little bit harder on this, you know, if you're behind somebody or whatnot, we'll tell you how we, how you can work to get there. Um, not a yeller, but I, I am passionate. I do I do enjoy coaching. I love it when that aha moment when you've taught something for so long and you 
we put the product out there <laughs> yeah. and they get it, you know, and they're right. scoring and they're, and they're defending, they're doing what they need to do. And, and, um, I get just as excited as they do about, about some of those things, but, um, I'm a pretty, pretty even keel, a pretty honest person. So. Thank you. So I think we should we should go to the the fun segment now. Yeah, I mean, not that this fun. hasn't been fun, but this is. I love going down memory lane. This, this is my yeah, I know. But this is <laughs> this is uh, this is Jay's specialty right here. We uh, a little lightning round, rapid fire, whatever you want to call it. Have you have you listened to the podcast yet? <laughs> not yet. I probably okay. should have briefed myself. That's okay. <laughs> I also want to take this this point in time to thank all the listeners out there. Make sure you rate, subscribe, review. Um, you can find us on uh, iTunes and Spotify. So rate. Subscribe, review. Thank Google you. Play Music, Owl right? Nation. Google Play. Yeah. Google Play. Apple Podcasts. All right, let's go into this. Cubby. So or worldwide. Worldwide. Cubs. Worldwide. So first thing that comes to your mind, just answer the question. Oh boy, okay. Have some fun. <laughs> Favorite NBA team? Celtics. I thought it was the Knicks. <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> I grew up I, did, I grew up loving the Knicks and John Stocks and those guys, but I'm from Rhode Island, so it's tough. So Dave is a Knicks guy, but I will support the Knicks. <laughs> Hopefully they're doing better with the new hire. I'm, I'm hoping. You know. Yeah, so Jay. There, there's hope. There's let's go hope. Tom there's Tibbs. Hope. Yeah, yep. let's go Tibbs. I like him. So. Favorite movie? Oh, gosh. I'm not a big movie buff. It's a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> well, the only thing that comes to mind right now is all the kids' movies that I'm watching. <laughs> that's <right>? fine. <laughs> Which one are you like? Trolls World Tour. That's a good okay. one. That's not that that's one's a great a new one. one. You know, that's a good one. Did you see Onward? I didn't see Onward, no. It was a little overrated. Yeah, Tom, I think Tro- I like Trolls <laughs> better than Onward. Yeah, Onward is a little overrated. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, favorite music artist? Favorite music artist? Uh, Thomas Rhett. Good. Love country. Favorite athlete growing up? Favorite athlete growing up? Uh, Ruth Riley. Throwback. What's one thing off your bucket list that you haven't done yet? Oh one thing off my bucket list that I haven't done yet? Um Get a house by the beach. Okay. <laughs> That's a big, <laughs> lofty <right>. goal. <laughs> okay, you have time. You have plenty of time to obtain I'm that goal, like I think. I'm like 70. At least <laughs> the kids are all good, and we're, we can have a uh, little, small little shack on the beach. There you go. go there if you could have one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Buffalo chicken, anything. Okay. Whether it's nachos or wings, anything buffalo chicken. Right. I'm that. with you on that one. <laughs> Apparently, JT makes a world-class Ooh. buffalo chicken dip. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be featured on the, the homecoming yeah. thing, aren't yeah. you? Virtual door, yep. I can't wait. Um, I'm going to be showing everybody how to make my world-famous buffalo chicken dip, right. which I had yesterday just to <laughs> test it out and make sure it's world-famous, and it is. It's okay. delicious. All right. okay, okay. Um, so my last question is, if you could have four four people that are alive at a dinner table, who would it be? could be anybody. Oh, God. Oh, goodness. Um. It's always a tough one. It, so, like, so, so, so whether they're alive or not now, or how does that work? Yep, they can be alive. They can be deceased. Oh boy. Just four people you want to have dinner with. Pick their brain. To, to pick their brain about anything. Anything in the world. Yep, could be basketball minded. It could be president. Life. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, can I? Can the Obamas be one person, or do they have to be two? Can I couple them together? <laughs> so I definitely. I love Michelle and Barack. They're two. They're two, they're two people. people. Two different people. Right, so you, got, you got two more. <laughs> two people. Barack and Michelle Obama are at the table. You yeah. have two more. I love them. Um, <clears throat> Coach Gino or Emma. Okay. For sure, for sure, for sure. Um, David Jalon. There husband, is. You know? There you go. <laughs> so that'd be a good group of people <laughs> to have. Well, he dinner. would want to be there. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I, why wouldn't I include him? That's, that's awesome. You know what? That's a that's a, one of the better responses, the, the more thoughtful. Because <laughs> really her, her response even was, he'd want to be there, so I want him to be he there. He would want to be there. You wouldn't want to miss that. That's really nice. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's fantastic. Thank you. You're Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, we, we appreciate it. This was yeah. awesome. We're glad you had you here, and it was uh, we had a lot of fun. Thanks, Coach. Thank First you. ballot Hall of Famer. Seriously, <laughs> SESU wins basketball coach, Kate Lynch, alongside today. It was fantastic having her here. We loved it. Remember, every Tuesday and Friday, you can check us out, put out our new podcast, Spotify iTunes, Google Play Music, we're all over the place. As as our producer would say, we're worldwide. So we'll see you guys on uh, Friday. Thanks for listening. Owl or nothing. Thank you, listeners. Rate, subscribe, review.